Yo, what up? Welcome to another episode of the Oakland Warriors podcast. This is Patrick flying solo. Listen, I just have to talk about this Warriors Pacers game because it was a lot of fun to watch the Warriors. They beat the Pacers 131, 109. And, you know, we asked Steve Kerr to play some of the young guys, specifically Kaminga and Moody. Moody was out for a little bit. But Steve Kerr finally saw the light, as we've kind of discussed, and now he's playing all the young guys. The Warriors, they played uh, Kaminga, Pajemski, Guy Santos, uh, Lester Quinones, serious minutes. Moody got some garbage minutes. Jerome Robinson got some, uh, he got two garbage minutes. I don't really count Jerome Robinson. But bottom line is the Warriors only played two dudes over 30 years old. That's Steph and Draymond. And if you flash back to the Warriors games against uh, this Indiana Pacers team last season, uh, the Warriors looked old. You know, you remember that? The Warriors lost all three games to the Pacers uh, last year. And... I mean, let's be honest, like, you know, the Pacers last season, they were not supposed to be very good, but with Halliburton and a couple of other guys coming on strong, they surprised, right? They had a lot of dudes. And in this game, it was like, oh, wow, the Warriors don't look super old and slow. I'm not saying that this change is permanent, you know, once Peyton gets back, once Chris Paul, once Clay Thompson, uh, they're going to get their minutes and whatnot. But the young guys have shown what they can do, and that that's really, really, really impressive. Lester Quinones, I swear, I thought that that dude was going to get some decent minutes at the start of this season. But I think, I personally think that uh, when Pajemski actually showed how good he could be already, uh, that just pushed uh, Quinones further to the end of the bench uh, to... Um, the G League some more and whatnot. But now he's getting an opportunity and he's showing what he can actually do. Uh, (laughs) We saw some highlights of him last season when he was just lighting it up. The kid can shoot and he's also a pretty willing defender. So you got to, you got to love that, you know, from James Wiseman's former Memphis teammate for three games. Uh, He played 27 minutes. It was only two for seven, uh, two for two from the line six points, but he was plus 12 with five assists and five boards. That's pretty good. Guy Santos is the dude that really, really, really I did not expect. I haven't watched him in the G League in a long time. I haven't watched many G League games at all this season. But I honestly expected that dude just to be like he was the the third guy picked with Ryan Rollins and Patrick Baldwin Jr., last year and I just figured he'd be one of those guys that would just eventually disappear but he's getting minutes he's getting minutes he he got minutes a couple games ago and he's been getting minutes ever since 21 minutes tonight five for eight two for two from three and those were big three pointers man right like uh the Pacers were making a move and then Santos hits one from the corner and then (laughs) Again, the Pacers are, are threatening, and Santos hits one from the uh, the top of the arc to the right side, right? And I'm I'm just impressed. The dude was plus five, 13 points, eight boards, one assist. Um, you just kind of love the energy that he brings, and he had a, a nice lob dunk from uh, the dunker spot. I, I was like, okay, you know, good for him. So that's that's promising as well. But one of the most important things is that, you know, the Warriors are playing a back-to-back. These guys all got super young legs, right? Because most of them haven't played much and they're just young. <laughs> so they were able to go out there and really, really, like, end of the third quarter, I think the lead was somewhere around 12 and all the starters, well, I'll take that back. Uh, Kaminga was in, Pajemski was in, but Steph and Clay, they were out. Oh, sorry, Steph and Draymond, they were out. Clay was 
uh, out because he uh, of an illness. He was sick. So the closing third quarter lineup was uh, Pajemski, um, Quinones, Guy Santos, Jonathan Kaminga, and um, Dario Saric, right? I mean, that that lineup was never on my bingo card at all this season. You know what I mean? So I was like, okay, hopefully they don't let this lead get smaller than seven or six. But they blew it up. They got like to 19, 20. You know what I mean? So uh, I'm, I was impressed. I was impressed. But it's also when you see them on the court, they're playing dudes their own age on the Pacers, right? And, you know, the Pacers have good players, but – when you're young and you're playing other young dudes, you're like, I, I can play these dudes. I'm sure some of these guys have crossed paths over the years coming up in high school, college, G League, whatever. So there's no fear there. You know what I mean? And I'm glad that they were able to really, really like stick a climb. That, that's, that's a huge confidence builder for the players, for those young guys. And it's a huge one for Steve Kerr moving forward, needing to put these guys in games. I mean, you love to see that. Uh, going back to the starters, it's like Steph had a great night, 15 for 22, 11 for 16 from three. Uh, he started off seven for seven, 42 points on the night, and only 30 minutes. It's not bad. It's not bad at all. Uh, Draymond, only 28 minutes, eight points. He did have five turnovers, but five assists, eight boards, and four for eight from the field. Uh, my guy Kaminga, 33 minutes, 9 for 16 from the field. Missed both three-pointers, four assists, two boards, two blocks, some nice ones, uh, three turnovers, but uh, plus 20 on the night, 18 points. Wiggins continues his resurgence. I've talked about how, like, where has this been and whatnot, just the aggressiveness. I get shooting slumps, but where were these uh, drop-step spin moves to the, to the basket with authority, with force? And he's playing with more force now. I just don't know why he wasn't doing it before. You know what I mean? Anyway, uh, 26 minutes, 5 for 10, 5 assists, 4 boards, plus 9, 11 points. And this was a fun game. This is a fun game to watch, man. And hopefully, like, Moody gets more in the mix once he gets his uh, legs under him. Uh, 13 minutes, mostly garbage, uh, 5 points. Trace Jackson Davis, the Indiana kid, the the fans were chanting for him. Good to see. Four minutes, only two for three, uh, six points. But um, yeah, this is fun. They got some. They got some dudes who can play and uh, play hard. And you just, it's it's promising. Obviously, like this is one game, and not all these guys are gonna click like this. But to do it on the road, when quote unquote benches play worse on the road, uh, is. Uh, is an auspicious way to end this, I believe, four and one road trip. So, you know, sneak in to the playoffs. That's the whole thing. Uh, we'll see how it goes. We'll see what happens when uh, Peyton and uh, CP get back. But, you know, at least they're entertaining. I said a while ago or like a week ago that I've let go of any expectations. I just want to be entertained and enjoy the ride. And so far on this road trip, they have made the ride entertaining and they've tied the number of games they've won on the road all of last season. They're only 11 and 12 this year, but they only won 11 on the road last year. So one thing is clear is that the chemistry is better. There is more joy, regardless of some of the stuff earlier in in the season. I've said, like I give some props to Draymond for, for like, you know, not going off during games on other players or the refs. In this one, he got a foul call, which looked like a clean strip, uh, but he got a call against him, and he came after the ref. Kaminga wrapped him up with both arms, kind of had a smile on his face, tried to slow him down and remind him uh, not to uh, get ejected, not to get a technical, not anything like that, that they need him out there because he is driving this so much. Uh, and uh, you like to see that from from Kaminga, and you like to see just like the team camaraderie and stuff. And Draymond is doing all the right things on the court, obviously, and it's good hearing that he's helping out, mentoring perhaps the younger dudes, especially Kaminga. Hearing quotes from Kaminga 
it's encouraging, especially considering all the reports previously that some of the vets were not as open to the young guys. They weren't really mentoring them. They were, you know, not very old, you know, not always happy to have so many young guys on the team. But in this one, it's like, hey, uh, you got no choice. All the all the older dudes are, are hurt, right? You know, so fun game, fun game. But uh, you know, we'll see. We'll see how it goes. I did an episode uh, about the draft with uh, the the Denver Nation Nuggets Nation podcast. I'll be putting that out in a bit. But just want to talk about this one because it's been a while since, you know, game has been this much fun. And also, you know, Kaminga, I talk about him so much, but just seeing his game to game development is is just awesome. And I've always said that, like, yeah, he's the most athletic warrior I've ever seen in my fandom. Right. More than Latrell Sprewell, more than uh, Andre Godala. Maybe if Andre was first two years, Andre, that's different. But like more than the Andre that we saw, uh, definitely more than Jason Richardson. But the thing about Kaminga is not just how high he can jump, it's how fast he is. He is a fast jumper. I've been saying that since his rookie year because there's other guys that can jump as high, almost as high, whatever, but he gets up there so quick. So when you watch him dive to the basket and take off from the middle of the lane, middle of the key, You know no one's going to get up there unless they already jumped. They're not going to get up there fast enough. You know what I'm saying? So seeing him get to the, uh, like a full head of steam and take off, if he gets off the ground first, no one is stopping him from getting to the bucket unless they're like Victor Wembanyama or something like that. You know, he's just that quick and he has good touch around the hoop. And it's just a joy to see. And also like him, his passing. His passing is getting better, you know, four assists on the night. So his decision making, like all I ever wanted, all a lot of us ever wanted was for Kerr to play him and to allow him to play through his mistakes. And he's doing that and he's making fewer mistakes. And it's also good that it's clearer to Kaminga what his role is. You know what I mean? Before he was just trying to figure it out, being yo-yoed in and out of the lineup. But it's clear He's making a concerted effort. Coaches probably reminded him, keep telling him, you know, dominate in the paint, get to the basket, get to the free throw line, you know? I mean, he didn't get to the line tonight, but still, that's what he's been doing. And, you know, it's a beautiful thing to see to have this inside out. Like, the Warriors haven't had this. Just a guy who can take his man off the dribble and dunk it in such a long time, just one-on-one. Yeah, you can, like, you know, Take your guy one-on-one and do a step back three. You know, guys can do that. Steph can do that, right? Or you can, like, get a screen and get past a guy. Jonathan Kaminga can get past some of the most most athletic dudes, big dudes, too, and just run right past them, and then it's too late. You know what I mean? And whereas last season I used to say the only two guys who can get to the cup were Steph and Poole, and they wouldn't get the free throws because – I, my theory was that a lot of the contact was below the uh, below the waist because they couldn't get up very high and the refs weren't giving it or they weren't seeing it, that Kaminga can not just get to the basket, he can finish strong. Whereas like Poole would rely on uh, craftiness, kind of outstretching the defender, getting the ball uh, off the backboard and whatnot. So this is an element that the Warriors haven't had. And is it going to take them to the NBA Finals? I mean, a lot would have to happen for the Warriors. But but it's something definitely to build upon. That's it. You know, that's it. And that's what I want. I want this team to have some hope, have potential to get better game in, game out. And... You know, not just for this season, but for next season and the season after that. Uh, Some people just want to sell the house and go all in on this season. I'm not one of those dudes. You all know that. So seeing what we got here development wise and, you know, is great. 
is great. You know, there used to be a time where like a guy used to be in the the D League, the G League, whatever, and they were just like, oh, they're just like a, a G League, D League player, right? Or back in the day, they were in the uh, the CBA, you know, <laughs> where the Warriors used to find guys like uh, Mario Eli or Vincent Askew and stuff like that, and they would just be, oh, those are those guys. But you know, the Warriors, these young dudes from the G League, hey, it's just strictly a developmental thing, and they have some skills. They definitely have some skills and it's uh, it's fun fun to see them because they're hungry and they seem to know how to play. So props to the G League Warriors for coaching up Guy Santos, for coaching up um, Lester Quinones and stuff like that. And I will say uh, props to Steve Kerr for going with these dudes and props to the vets for finally acquiescing and knowing that some of these guys have to play, you know. Uh, they won't all play once CP, GP, and Clay come back. Uh, but you know, at least we were seeing. I mean, I looked at the 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 box score for one of the games last year in Indiana, or for there was one game in Indiana, and man, it was uh, to Michael Green, Ty Jerome, <laughs> Anthony Lamb, and yeah, you had know, Divincenzo De- De- Pool and whatnot, but like. It's nice that they're not just rolling with the olds, playing something. Let's get some youth in here. All right, that's all I got.